Um, hello, welcome to Adevinta. I'm Didac. Um, I work here as a data scientist. And before we start the event, I will give you a couple of minutes of talk about what is Adevinta and what we do here. And I will do it through the purpose, the mission, and the vision of the company. Our purpose is to make a positive change in the world, helping everything and everyone to find a new purpose. And we, how we do this? We do this by creating matches on the world's most trusted marketplaces. And why, why we want to do this? Because we firmly believe that uh, sustainable commerce is crucial in shaping a healthy society. Um, among all these world's most trusted marketplaces that I just mentioned, uh, well, we are present in 10 countries. In Spain, in particular, we have several marketplaces or job uh, or web portals. Uh, those that are in my shirt, uh, for InfoJobs, that is the leading board job board in Spain, Fotocasa and Habitaclia, that are in the real estate sector, Coches.net, Motos.net, that are in the mobility sector, and also Mil Anuncios as a second hand generalist uh, marketplace. Some numbers. Uh, among all the, the portals that we have in the world, we receive about 2.5 billion monthly visits. And we are a team of about 6,000 employees around the world. And uh, these employees, uh, because people and culture are key aspects of our company, uh, we try to build uh, teams that are as much diverse as possible in terms of age, gender, um, nationality, origin, uh, seniority. So at the end, there is a place for everyone in Adevinta. If you want to know more, more details about what we do, we can chat after the event because I don't want to spend more time here. Uh, uh, let's just start with this. Hey, so yeah, thank you, Adevintia, for hosting us. Uh, I'm Albert. I'm from the Barcelona Office of Our People. Uh, you can see a few uh, red t-shirts around. Uh, if you want a t-shirt, you can donate us 15 euro and I will donate you a t-shirt later. Uh, so what do we do? We do meetups, right? We try to do uh, a meetup every month, but we don't succeed at that because it's it's too much work. So we ended up doing every two months or something. Uh, if you have an idea and you want to talk about something, Paul, talk to us. We are we do anything that's free software slash open source, right? Uh, don't open data if you want, right? Adjacent. So yeah, that's it. Uh, thank you to uh, obviously Adevinta for hosting us. Our patrons, which are down there, thank you. Uh, KD Spain, Free Software Foundation Europe, uh, OpenSUSE, and Pine64. And that's it. Now, Mark and Vladimir will give the actual talk about OpenStreetMap. Thank you. Okay. Uh, uh, today, we will talk about OpenStreetMap and the, because this is an open data geography database. My name is Vladimir. I work in MapTyler as developer advocate. I have been working with web mapping, developing web mapping application for almost 20 years. So I'm old enough. <laughs> uh, let me pass uh, Mark. Hello, everyone. My name is Mark. I'm a political science by trade, turned data analyst, and generally the go to map guy in pretty a lot of places. I'm um, a volunteer in OpenStreetMap as well. Uh, we cooperate in making possible this database. We do field work. We use open data sources to complete our information and so on. And so now it's back to Vladimir, who will tell us about everything there is to know about OpenStreetMap and its uses as a for web mapping. And I afterwards I will be talking a bit about its potential for data analysis or data science or statistics. First, hmm. okay. Uh, well, first is what is OpenStreetMap? You know who is OpenStreetMap? Yeah. Okay. Also, awesome. Okay. Yeah. Basically, OpenStreetMap is a free and open database 
este, of the world. It's a map of the world and it's maintained by the community of volunteers. Basically, now there are some uh, enterprise that collaborate to the maps, but basically it's maintained by, by volunteers. Uh, the OpenStreetMap data is licensed under the Open Database license, that is la, the ODBL. And if you want to have uh, more information, you can enter the OpenStreetMap uh, webpage here. So uh, the data of OpenStreetMap, geographical data, the geometry of the OpenStreetMap data is basically, uh, we have like three objects. One is the node that is like for points. Then another object is like the for lines that is called ways. And it's like a succession of nodes, ordered nodes. And for polygons, we use the same object, the way that it's aligned, that is closed. And the other kind of object is like the relations. The relation is like a, a, a conjunct of nodes or waves or even relations that we can create like multi-polygons or for example, like the line of one train. It is our relation because we have the line, the stops, and that kind of thing. So this is basically the three objects for the geography. So a part of this, uh, sorry, yep, uh, to differentiate one object to another because if we have have a point for, for example, for a coffee shop or a point for a hospital, we need to know what is what. No, so for this we use attributes or tags that is basically uh open a uh, tag system that is basic in key value parse so you can define whatever key you want and put whatever value you want but normally these key value parts are defined by the community and if you want to add new key value part you can propose it to the community we discuss it and we accept it or not but basically it's an open key value part system so for example, for a building, you draw a close way, so a line cross, and you put the, this key building yes, and then of the street maps know that this is a building. Or for example, for a, a coffee shop or McDonald's, you put a node, you use the tag amenity, fast food, and then the, also the, the tax brain McDonald or name McDonald, wherever. Or for example, for differentiate one way, for another, you use the highway residential, that it's a residential street, or you can use highway trunk for a speedway. So this is basically the system of the attributes of OpenStreetMap. So uh, one thing that we need to know about working with OpenStreetMap uh, uh, database or with data is that one thing is the database and another thing is the map or the render, the map that you can see in the web page or in many web pages. So basically you don't map for the render. So if you add new data to the OpenStreetMap, add the data that it is like in the reality. Don't don't think if this is I draw this map and that way, this appear in the map in that way. Because depend of the render, for example, here we have two renders, like this one is like the basic render, but this one is the same data but it's another render that is basically for uh, bicycles. So here there are bicycle articles or bicycle points that they are article uh, features, sorry, uh, that it's, it's basically the same map with this data. This is the, the data, the raw data here. And depending on the render, you can see some objects or another. So this is why it's important to don't map for the render. So the important is the data here. Yep. Uh, how to contribute to OSM or to OpenStreetMap? You have several software or application to contribute to this. Uh, one is for desktop, that is JOSOM, that is like the more advanced uh, editor. It's a little bit more complicated than, the, than others, but it's the more powerful. For the web, we have like ID, that is the default editor that you have in the web of the OpenStreetMap. And you have the rapid idea that is more or less the same, but they, they have some help on the AA. So they can 
identify some buildings or road or whatever, so mapping a little bit faster. And for mobile, we have uh, several applications like the Spoochie, Street Complete, Organic Map, uh, Osman, that they work, some work like editors, but also you can use it in your mobile, like Google Maps or something like this, but using upstream map data. And there is some application that is map roulette that is basically they propose some challenge to contribute to the map and you can fill the challenge it's a little bit of gamification to how to contribute to open stream map data so yeah also another way to contribute to open stream map is join one of the community so we have one community here in catalonia that is the catalan community we also have some community in spain but there are a lot of community around the world, like Ireland, USA, um, Latin America, wherever. So here you can find more information about the communities. So after this brief introduction of OpenStreetMap data, because OpenStreetMap is a map, we uh, first I will talk about a little bit about web mapping basic because or use OpenStreetMap data in a web application, you need to, to know something. So first, we have this shape of the world, who think that this is the correct shape of the, the world or the Earth. Yeah. Yeah, it's a sphere. OK, yeah, one here. But uh, who think that it's it, like flat Earth, like the flat Earth? Nothing is from the flat Earth community here, no? Or it's a shame, but none of them are correct. So the, the world is something like this. So this is very difficult to, to put information over some object like this. So this is why basically we uh, represent the earth like the a sphere. And then to put this sphere to a plane or a sheet or a screen or whatever, uh, we need to use some kind of projection. So we can use some uh, conical projection, spherical connection, uh, and this kind of projection. So for normally for the web or for using maps in general, you use like this uh, spherical con uh, projection that is like a uh, square. And, and this projection, we have like several uh, kind of projection. And one of these is like this, a projection in degrees that is basically for the world the, the sphere in a in a in degrees so this is the coordinate system or the projection that use open street map internally but for web mapping we use a, a another projection because this projection that is like unprojected the, if you see this image of the world is a little bit like distortionate, like it's a little bit rotated. So basically if we saw some maps or in the web, we saw the map like this. You enter Google Maps or wherever, uh, you see, saw the map like this. And this is Mercator. So why we use this projection? Uh, because uh, this projection is good for, for the web because it's like a square and we will see later. One of the things that we need to know is if to fall, unfold the, like the sphere in a plane, we need to sacrifice one thing like uh, angles or dimension or shapes and that kind of thing. So Mercator is very good at maintaining the angles and it is why they are, was using for the sea people for navigation because in the sea, you want to maintain the the azimuth, no, the room to to arrive to some port. So, for the other hand, for the dimension of the of the world or the shapes, they have like a lot of distortion if for the North Pole, even or the South Pole. So this is why are like the maps in Mercator normally like we have like a very big Greenland. But in the reality, like the the dimension are this. So this is one of the things that we need to, to know about this uh, that we have in mind. So, uh, but like I say, Mercator 
is like a sphere, like a square, and these are like the coordinates. The Mercator is not in degree, it's in meters. So uh, we use meter for this. And the thing of this is like we use Mercator because we can do like this pyramid of tiles. So one tile or square is uh, is divided for four in the next zoom level. So the first zoom level, we have like all the words in one tile, in one square. That is like uh, 256 or 255 pixels. So this is in the zoom level zero. When we go to zoom level one, we split this by four. So this is basically a quad tree. So every zoom level, we multiply by four. So uh, the origin of the coordinates of, in this tile matrix is in the top left origin. So at the beginning, we have like zero, zero, one, zero, two, zero, and that's it. So this is important because the applications or the web mapping application, they use this kind of tile systems to show the world. So when you open Google Maps or open street maps or here maps or whatever map, Apple Maps, they use this system to show the, the world. So this is an example. So some zeros, uh, some, some level zero, we have all the world in one tile, that this, this. Some level one, we have the world in these uh, four tiles. And some level two, we have the world divided in in this tile. So each part of this is the, the tile that we love in our application. So here, uh, if you want to know more a little bit web mapping basic, here is like a series of videos explaining this better and with more calm and with more detail <laughs> than this. So uh, if you want to to take a picture, or maybe we can share it uh, later. If you uh, you search web mapping basic in YouTube, you can uh, write here. So this is the OpenStreetMap tiles. In the OpenStreetMap web page, we have like this tile server that is basically this URL here. And you can saw this pattern of X, uh, theta, X, Y. And this is replaced by the zoom level, the X in the matrix and the Y uh, in the matrix. So for example, for this URL here, it is zoom level three and the X is two, so zero, one, two, and the Y is four, so zero, one, two, three, four. And this tile here is this image here. So this is how this work internally to have the, the map of OpenStreetMap. So another way of using OpenStreetMap and data is, is using the overpass API. So we have like two kinds of this, the overpass API that you can search in this, uh, with this uh, symbology or with this uh, language, sorry, uh, here. Or you can use the overpass turbo that is the same overpass API, but they have like, like a UX user interface and you can, they have some wizard and it's easy to use at the at the beginning. So this is one way to how to extract data for OpenStreetMap data using this overpass API. Uh, one, uh, another option is if you want to to use or to develop your own OpenStreetMap data server, not to use the OpenStreetMap data server. Uh, here in this web page, the to switch to SM and explain how to use how to develop your own server on OpenStreetMap data. So basically, uh, we have uh, two ways of using the OpenStreetMap data. But the most important thing to using OpenStreetMap data is always, always put the attribution. It's the only thing that OpenStreetMap uh, asks for to use the data. So you can uh, always put the attribution like OpenStreetMap contributor in your web page or in your uh, application or whatever. 
if you don't use the obligation, one of these kittens will die. So please use the <laughs> please use the 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 attribution always. So here you have more details about the copyright or how to use the attribution uh, for the OpenStreetMap. So like I say, uh, you have like two ways of serve or create your own server of OpenStreetMap data. One is serving raster tile that is like this image that we saw before that the raster are image. So basically, you download the OpenStreetMap raw data that are 72 gigabytes of data. It's called the, this file is called Planet, and then you you upload this data to your server. You can upload it in a PostGIS or another database, and basically you generate this tile of, of, of this pyramid of tiles in your server using this software, the Mapnik. And then you have one uh, style or one map. Now this Mapnik, you can say, I want the road uh, in red or the rivers in blue and that kind of thing. So it's basically then. And then your user can use these tiles using any API or library or whatever they can use it. One thing of the raster, if, if you want to develop another map or another style, you need to render all the pyramid of tiles again. So if you want to have like another uh, style, like a dark style for navigation, uh, you need to generate all the tiles again. So if you generate a lot of style, it's like the all the world of tiles even if you go deeper in the zoom level. So uh, another approach that is, I think, a little bit better is using vector tile. So using vector tiles, you have like the same, you have like the same pyramid of tile, but instead of image, they are like vectors. So this is the word splitting in vector. So uh, again, you can uh, download the raw data. In this case, you can download the, the, the same planet in this format, the embed tiles. Here in this open map tiles, you can find the, the planet in this format, or you can generate it using many tools. So it's basically more or less the same size. You upload this uh, file to your own server, and you can serve it using maybe the, this tile server GL, the, the one of the software, or you can serve it directly from PostGIS uh, also. And but in this way, because they are vector, like because you are serving vector, no, no image, the this map style or this render are in the client. So the client library need to know how to render these vectors. But in this way, you only generate one pyramid of style, but you can have many, many styles in the library uh, or in the client. So here with the same data, you can have like this uh, light, uh, dark, bright, whatever. So this is basically the two ways of how to you can uh, serve in tiles for OpenStreetMap data. So to consume this tile of OpenStreetMap data, you can uh, use any of these map library. This, all these library are open source. One is uh, Leaflet and Open Layer are more focused to consume like raster data and MapLibre or MapTyler SDK that is basically in MapLibre uh, are more focused in vector tiles data. So if you want to use it one or another, uh, you can use it. If you want more information, we can talk later <laughs> about this. <laughs> So basically one example of how to create like a web application using leaflet is this. You can load the leaflet library here. And here you can define like, like a div with some ID. And then you can tell leaflet to use like this div to draw the map, set the view like this, this are coordinated here in Barcelona. And then you can allow the, the tile layer. This is the OpenStreetMap tile layer. You can show this uh, format, no? And the leaflet library now, when you are navigating in the in the map, like making the zoom or moving around, they know which value to put here to here to, to show the correct image in the maps. So 
this is basically a how to create application with leaflet here you can have more information in leaflet.js uh, uh, library there uh, uh, here is more or less the same you see bab libre that is the vector tile uh, basically is more or less the same you have like a div and you told uh, the map libre to draw the map in this div with the id the main difference here is the the vector tiles need a style because like i know before uh, i say before it, it, so you have vector from the server so you need to have like a style to tell how to draw these vectors in the in the client so basically you load one style in this case i'm using one map tiler open street map style that is defining in, in one json file so they are uh, open specification of how to define this style to read it here so basically this is how to use the map delivery i don't know if i can no you click in the in the in the image uh, yeah yeah so basically here uh we have a map that is, this is combined raster tiles because we have the image satellite but over this we have like this vector that they are the street and if you change sorry for that <laughs> for example if you change like this outer map or these street maps dark we have the, the the same information it's the same tile but using different style in the client so here you can navigate well, another advantage of using vector tile is if you rotate the map i don't know if i can do it here and yeah you can rotate the map a little bit i don't know how yeah this way and the the labels are all are always in the in the right positions so if you have this in image like using raster tile you can do it this so yeah go to the presentation yes thank you and that's it for me now mark okay so thank you very much uh thank you i wanted to do some kind of whole model or some I decided not to do it for two reasons. The most important one is that I was royally sick this last week, so I did not really feel like finishing it. Second is that probably there's a bunch of data scientists and people who are way, way, way better than I am to do this kind of thing. So this is just the beginning. This is just a sketch. And uh, you will probably imagine what to do a lot better than I, than I did. So as our colleague said, uh, Open OpenStreetMap is a database. OpenStreetMap is full of information which we can use for whichever reason we want to do. So, for instance, this is New York, as you can probably imagine. And is some, maybe you know that there is one of these typical practice databases, which is about taxi trips in New York, which tells you about how far did they, they travel, where did they start and where did they finish, how much did they pay. So, for instance, let's think about how much did they tip because you know americans love tipping so this is what they did so now we have a map of new york here and we have how much on average do they tip in the beginning and the pickup of the trip or in the drop off point so you see um here and i was told to stay here sorry um so you can see that here in manhattan tips are slightly higher there's this weird place here in Staten Island. This is New this is a Newark, uh, Newark uh, Airport. So of course, uh, people are going to tip higher. Ditto for LaGuardia, and I think that the Kennedy is somewhere around here. So, but now we want to say that is there something else to it? Just like the airport or whatever. Or imagine that we have to make a model for this for our job or because we for a job interview, whatever. So. We have an idea. Let's say, is there something about these places, about each of these tiny little polygons that makes people tip more or tip less um, on a, when they pick up or on what they and drop off from a taxi trip? I don't know. Let's find out. So I use R, uh, the R programming language, 
using a library that's uh, OSM data. There's uh, plenty of equivalents for Python, Java, JavaScript, which have pretty much whichever major programming language you can think of. And this, what these libraries do is they interact with the overpass API Vladimir told us about, which is the way you can download the data from OpenStreetMap. So what I do is, let's say, I don't know, people will tip more if they are going or coming from a restaurant or a nightclub or, I don't know, or having a beer or going shopping or going to a theater. So let's download all the OpenStreetMap data about this kind of amenities in New York. And this is how we do it in the R language. So you see, you tell them to look in New York City and you ask them to get uh, all these Okay, brilliant. I love that. Uh, uh, all this kind of thing. So, um, key amenity value bar, key amenity value restaurant, key amenity value pop, key amenity value cafe, and so on, and then cinema, theater, and shopping malls. And it returns something like this. So, uh, uh, a data frame with the name of the place, the kind of amenity it is, so restaurant, bar, pop, uh, restaurant, cafe, so on and if they sell something. So it's a shop, the key, for instance, is Everything Goes Book Cafe, it's amenity cafe, shop, book, because they are a cafe that sells books, of course. So, now what we do? So we have downloaded this data, we have counted how many instances of each is on each polygon. I will upload the code eventually for that. Don't laugh at it. And so we see that, well, there's a lot of food and drink here in Manhattan, here in Brooklyn. Um, there's some shopping malls, interestingly, here in Staten Island. And here was one of the places with bigger tips. So we can hypothesize that this is, you know, Staten Island is a very residential place. There's pretty much nothing, but there's a mall. So when people have to go there, and it's a pretty long trip, they're going to tip nicely because it's a nice and long trip. Uh, then cinemas and theaters, of course, in in Broadway, the nightclubs, for whatever reason, there are a lot of them here, or in the west side of, of Manhattan, and so on. So now, do these have any relation with the, with the average tipping amount? Kind of, sort of. What a disappointment. But in any case, we can see, for instance, that people will tip about Five dollars when they're picked up in places with plenty of food and drink. Uh, ditto for drop off, and also for night with places with more restaurants and so on. So, is this the end or all there is to it? No, but this is some interesting information that we could be using, and that was basically it. So, basically, what we have done here is go go ahead and have a look add all the information there is in OpenStreetMap and use it to solve our problems. I am a bit sorry that I could not go any further than that, but this was pretty much it. So now we all recommend you to check all these websites. So go and check our website, openstreetmap.org, switch to OpenStreetMap, switch to OpenStreetMap, and of course, remember to uh, attribute the data properly or kittens will die. And that was pretty much it. So thank you very much, everyone. And this is us, uh, Vladimir Cherban and Mark Bosk. Any questions? The floor is open. So uh, we will take questions now. If you want to write your friend, we'll pass the uh, maker out. You can do it. Yes. Uh, English. <laughs> uh, thank you for amazing talk. I have a question like um, in like different city, like local open city community, proud of different thing. So what is like the best information layer in Barcelona in terms of open streets, open street map data? And second question, like where contribution will be helpful? Like how we can improve the open street map data? Like, where is the most uh, painful moment of the data in the Barcelona city? Go 
Uh, it's a difficult question. So I think the the best way to contribute or the easy way to contribute is to try to improve your street. So it starts small, like putting like the shops in your streets and that kind of things, or the, the direction of your street, and then go further. So I think this is the easy way to start. I don't know, maybe Jose Luis know more about what are the lack of information in Barcelona. I think here in Barcelona, we have a lot of of data. And I think we have like the 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 all the the street names here in the in the maybe the portals the 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 street the numbers of the house they are not complete in Barcelona or the buildings also they are not completed here in Barcelona but they are one of the things that they are missing here in Barcelona so and for the the first question I uh, you know what what what's the first question. Oh, whoa. I, I, I don't know what it is. Yeah. I know there are like a, a lot of cities that are very good mapping. Like, I don't know, Berlin, the Germans are very good mapping uh, in Open Street Map. They are like, I don't know, the best or mapping. <laughs> but in Barcelona, I think we have like a lot of data here. Yeah. I don't know. So, Luis, nope. No, no. Sorry, I can answer that question. So for me, well, one data that I miss is the street numbers, which are hugely important to do routes. So maybe you can comment on that. Because I think maybe I'd like to contribute, but then what do I contribute with one street number? Or do I have to go like contributing every street number? Um, well, right now, we as we are working on it. So you see, uh, importing buildings in OpenStreetMap is a very tedious process. It's very difficult to do it, right? We're using the cadaster data. So we essentially download the cadaster data for a street segment or for a neighborhood. And then we, we send them into the map semi-automatically. Uh, emphasize on semi-automatically, we cannot do just dump data into the map because it's a recipe for disasters, duplications, and the routing engines going mad. So please, if you're interested in that, do get in touch with us, with Jose Luis and Vladimir or myself, and we will tell you what we actually do. So about the portals. Right now, we know it's, it's a challenge. It's really important and we finish it as soon as possible. Also, because for instance, I don't know if you're familiar with a, co with a cooperative called Mensacas, which are um it's a cooperative of bike messengers who don't want to work with Glover or Uber Eats or whatever. So and they use open open source software, they use OpenStreetMap, and they were complaining about that. So we are making an effort to get there. So there are some solutions uh which you, if you're interested we can discuss afterwards. But definitely if you can start with your street and just down, you can download the uh, Street Complete app application. Sorry, and you go ahead, and it will it will prompt you to say like, "Hey, what's what house number is? What number does this house have?" And then you can input it, and this will be enormously helpful. If you want to go ahead, just join our Telegram group. We're a very welcoming folk. We are all all not very nice, so we will be very happy to cooperate. But yes. Three numbers are our priority, one of our number one priorities, and we are aware that we are way behind where we where we would like to be. But then again, all hands are welcome here. Uh, another question about the, the I used the street complete, and they they were asking many times. What type of street is it? Is it a, a road with a tarmac or is it a, a with a, well, just sand or something like that? Um, yes. Well, well, how, uh, how much uh, useful data is there in street uh, in no OpenStreetMap? And is there, because I, I think that there is 
much more than than map data uh, in OpenStreetMap. Like, like, yeah, like type of road. Oh, of the thing is, things. Uh, this this information, of course, is very useful for routing engines. There are plenty of open source routing engines. We can talk for it. Uh, there's OSRM, so Open Street Routing Machine. Uh, there's one called Valhalla. Then there is one incredible one done in Java, which is called uh, R4, so like Rapid Reliable um, R something routing. If you're familiar with that, it's pretty incredible, and it has some very good bindings for Python, R, and so on. And this is important for that. Or for instance, for me, I uh, as a cyclist, I like I like I would like to know which surface I am cycling on. So that's also interesting for and also for instance, in the light of universal accessibility. So for instance, if you're using a wheelchair or if you're blind and you have to walk with a stick, those are information that are very useful to know. So knowing if it's a cobbled um street or not. However, if you're not interested in that, which I totally get because it, it can get very tedious and very boring to do that. I think that you can prioritize which missions you're more interested in in using Street Complete. So if you want to focus on street numbers or checking whether shops are still open or whatever, so you're all you can do that. Hello. Uh, are you working some uh, indoor uh, spaces like under rough cities or something like that? <laughs> yeah, we have one one of our colleagues is extremely mad about indoor mapping. He's not he could not join us. He has a very a very young young kid, so he has other obligations. Uh but yes, we we do that. For instance, for shopping malls, it would be the or for subway or train stations, it's pretty useful to do. So we're even talking about mapping individual platforms and so on. And um, so, yes, it's not what most of us do most, but we definitely do it. And some of us love doing it. <laughs> I have a question. Uh, do you have some kind of quality control system to make sure that no wrong data or contradictory or even outdated data is included in the database? Uh, you, you have them in front of you. All of us, I mean, but uh, in fact, I would say that at, at this point, I mean, there's a lot of information missing. Uh, for instance, I one of my pet projects is completing the information about every school in the country. So in like whether it's a primary or secondary school, public or private and so on, um, street numbers. But then again, the map is full. I mean, at this point, when we're talking about Catalonia, we're talking about a few quite a few hundreds of of megabytes of data, um, a crap ton of objects. So it's pretty important that you keep an eye on on the map, especially if you use it a lot, and then always try to update it. Some of our, there are some applications to check the quality. So one of our colleagues wrote a very useful uh, web app to check the names and the limits of municipalities and comarcas here in Catalonia. Why? Because, as you know, mm, there's some political issues about the language. And some people are trying to go against the standards of the community. So we have a watchdog that tells us every morning a Telegram bot when, whether something has been vandalized or not. Because we're all, we deal with a lot of vandalism on this issue. Uh, add, uh, add something. Uh, there are some application to watch the, the data, like OSM Cha, OSM Cha. That is a application that you can watch whatever you want, like changing this area or changing this kind of of object and that kind of thing. And this is one of the way. The other way is like the community that they are always watching the maps, but sometimes there are some people that they are vandalizing the map. Uh, we have a. Uh, not now, but at the beginning of, for example, of Pokemon Go, because Pokemon Go use OpenStreetMap data. So some people are like vandalizing the maps 
because if they discover that if you create like a park or a waterfall in some place, they appear some Pokemon in this place. It's funny. So they cre start creating some kind of uh, strange thing in the maps to, to have like this Pokemon near their house or whatever. So the, the community watch this. But there are some companies like Map Tyler or Mapbox, or there are a lot of companies that use OpenStreetMap data to offer like a service to to companies, and they have the the method of quality controls, and they release the data like more space, not not live data, like maybe every week or whatever. So they take care of that kind of thing. So there are alternatives using OpenStreetMap data. But if you are uh, aware or even I think Facebook have the use, use OpenStreetMap data for their maps. So Facebook have to their uh, quality control process or whatever. So there are some alternatives for that. Yeah. You, talk, you talked about the, the names of streets and buildings and all that. Is there a layer for translations like uh, New York, Nueva York? Uh, yes. yes, yes, yes. You have like the, the tag is the tag name, the, the name for the object. So you can use name uh, dot uh, Luis. Yeah, I think you can uh, put like name uh, two dots and uh, the language like S or CA or a, a n for english and you can translate whatever you want in in every language so there is a, a like a layer of the way to translate the 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 things so maybe jose luis will show you an example of that So here you can now like name KO for Korean or uh, Latvia, I don't know, Portuguese, Russian, Ukrainian. So you can create the, the tags with whatever you want. And for the language, we use this tag for the names. So French or, yeah. So there is a way to translate the, the things. So, question and that's it okay no more questions so another question yeah. thank you um now there will be food and drinks available for everyone at the other wing of the building so thank you for being here thank you for yeah. the talks thank and you we can discuss it yeah, further in, during the yeah yeah the pika pika yeah uh, thank you for the host at the beta. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you. I'm free software for the invitation. So <laughs>